Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and we're about to go to a very special guest who we flew in from uh, parts unknown on the eastern side of the United States, and uh, that is former NSA worker, uh, basically our own, we call it, I guess he was our Edward Snowden before Edward Snowden even existed, because a lot of the stuff he brought up and talked about with Alex and that Alex has brought up is now finally coming out. We're getting names to these things. We're uh, assigning dates, but the information was already out there. But before we go to our guest, I want to play a clip. Just last week, he was attacked by several Daily Beast and Washington Times reporters over a story that was eventually proven to be true. They just wanted to attack the messenger like they normally do. So we're going to go to that clip right now. This is from Unreliable Sources. Things took an odd turn this past week when its sister paper, The Observer, ran a front page story that claimed European official has, officials had reached a secret deal with the NSA to turn over private data to the USA. Now, that sure sounds scandalous, but here's the thing. The article based its claims on a single, very unreliable source, a notorious conspiracy theorist named Wayne Madsen, whom reporter Jamie Doward never even spoke with. And not surprisingly, the article was eventually retracted, but not before it made the rounds on the internet, even receiving a coveted Drudge Report link. Coveted Drudge Report link. Oh my gosh, Wayne Matson. So, and, and if you go and watch the rest of it, we can pull up the article there where it's at. These reporters really lay into you, your credibility. You know, you cl claiming 9/11 was an inside job. All these other horrible things right. that we have uh, intelligence reports on, and, and stand down orders, and other government officials saying it was. Yet yeah, these guys went after you. Um, so what, what was the big deal? What was the big deal? Well, first of all, you know, for them to call themselves reporters is laughable because one of them is a guy named Michael C. Moynihan. I mean, right. the guy is a political hack. He, uh, he, he uh, tried to break into journalism by going where every aspiring American journalism goes, Stockholm. Uh, where he worked for uh, an NGO called Timbro. Now, this is a free market think tank that's been linked to Karl Rove. Yeah. So this guy's obviously a, a, a GOP, neocon uh, hack. Uh, he's, uh, he's attacked others. Now, uh, what, what this was all premised on, this CNN hit piece, uh, now th th this used to be the show run by Howard Kurtz, who basically got run out of there because he... He, he made several attacks. I mean, he's another hack. Howard Kurtz had that show for years. Mm -hmm. What he didn't advertise was the fact that he was married to a Republican operative. Uh, th this is the problem with the CNNs and the Foxes and the MSNBCs. The all, the mainstream media. all of them, all of yeah. them. They don't come clean. They don't no. say who they're connected with. So um, the the Observer contacted me uh, because I had provided them two declassified documents. Uh, there was all this talk about the tapping of the transatlantic 14 cable that goes from uh, Germany and Denmark down to the Netherlands and France over to Cornwall and England and then goes to Tuckerton, New Jersey and how the, uh, Snowden, Edward Snowden said, well, you know, they're doing metadata uh, collection off of this cable and he came out, out with the name of the the cover term tempora of it, yeah. uh, which was new we right. didn't know what that was called well, but we knew it was we, going on back no. in the day oh absolutely yeah. and I in two, uh, on February 4 2009 I talked about how the NSA was using metadata mm -hmm. collection to get emails which is exactly what he said was going on with the cable I, I provided the observer with two declassified documents. One that shows definitely that the NSA has third parties. We know who the second parties are. Right. That's the English speaking club. That's the US, US's first party, the second party, uh, Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. Third parties are mostly NATO allies, non speaking, uh, non English speaking uh, countries. And I showed the observer these documents. Uh, one document showing there were third parties. It was actually titled Partners and, 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 and Targets. So this gets into the issue about, yes, France and Germany are partners, but they're also targets. Right. And, and the other one I showed him was the SIGINT exchange descriptors used for each of these countries. Um, uh, and there, the different countries have different descriptors. I think uh, Denmark is called Dynamo. That's the co cover term. NSA is full of these cover terms, by the way. In 2005, I provided a list of over 400 of them. Some of them we've seen on Snowden's list. Some of them are new. Right? Right. It came up since. So a lot of this was known. 
Um, the Daily Beast guys, Moynihan and this guy Josh Rogan and right. this guy John Avalon, all all ne uh, we had a picture of that noted too. neocons, by the way. Right. Um, they um, they were part of this small group that get they get on Twitter, they get on Facebook, they get on all this social, and they attack people. Right. Uh, one of the guys runs this website called Little Green Footballs. This guy Charles Johnson, apparently he's some some ex-band member with Chicago. You know, a lot of these guys are kind of fried, uh, brain-fried uh, former band people mm -hmm. who, you know, can't succeed in the music business anymore and they become political pundits. I don't, rec I don't recommend that, especially if you got a history of heavy drug use. Um, and your brain is basically gone. We got enough brain-dead politicians without having Sure. Yeah. Pundits come along right. out of the out of the out of the uh, the the rock. Yeah, they like to band. party together. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and so what happened was they piled on the Observer, and the Guardian ran it too. That's a sister paper right. of the Observer. Um, they're, they're, they made it sound like they were. It was a, a big group of people upset that they used me as a source, and then you get all the crackpot allegations, 9/11 truther. Um, and they went back and they uh, grabbed everything on the internet. And, and they, they, they said that the, first of all, they lied. They said the observer um, grabbed the information from a, a, a website run by uh, Simon Davies, who is a former Director General of Privacy International, who I worked with on this anti-NSA stuff back in uh, the late 90s. So, you know, this was all known what was going on. The European Union uh, Parliament had an investigation, which we all participated in helping them uh, conduct that investigation of NSA surveillance. Uh, but they went back and found everything I had written, and this they, they ran this attack uh, uh, piece that was on CNN. And um, this was basically the same the same small group of people, the same ilk that went after Dan Rather with the Texas Air National Guard story. Which and, just turned out to be true True, well. true. Yeah. The documents weren't the original, but the right. information was absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. And also they attacked poor 89, she was 89 at the time. Let me do the famous Alex Jones in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Only Thomas. I can. No, no, no. I'm sitting there watching in the control room down the news. You're doing a great job. And do over here. I just want to point out, because you'll never toot your own horn, <laughs> that like two weeks after you come on my show, everything you said comes out. Tapping the cable, yeah. uh, Europe working with them, using Europeans to spy on us, we spy on them. Right. Which, as you know, that was all in stuff you put out 10, 15 years ago. That was all in the former producer for Nightline, James Bamford's it, Body it, of Secrets. It was in his books. So right. when you're informed, you know these shows are lying. Right. I mean, it's not like right. I'm just believing Wayne Madsen. Right. And, and you're the guy that kept bringing out a decade ago all the big whistleblowers. I mean, you're the guy that's been credited with this, and they just go, oh, he's a crackpot and use a wrong name on CNN. I believe on purpose so that people can't search and find it. Right, so, Michael Madsen, they came out and so, said. Yeah, Michael Madsen. Madsen. Michael Madsen, yeah. the actor, yeah, right. I mean, now yeah. you're, you know, uh, Michael Jackson. You know, the whole point <laughs> is is that this is big, so I just had to come in and say that. You did a great job. No, it, on the you're, you're exactly I right. Did. Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, Wayne Madsen was providing all this stuff well before Ed, <laughs> Edward Snowden was. And he, all Edward Snowden did was give us names to these things that we knew were going on. I'm like on. the pet dwarf now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> hey, this is real TV, teleprompter free. Are there any teleprompters in the studio? There are none. I see no teleprompters now. But when I, you're at CNN, they're all over the place. Hey, so those, those clowns, Avalon and the, the other, Moynihan and R Rogan, uh, all had, there were teleprompters present. And then that, present. that allows, the, for those that don't know, the big guys upstairs to write the same script. Oh, That's why God. the nightly news, ABC, CBS, NBC, it's all the same order, same thing, same Prozac ads in between. I just and, watched, and, uh, Jones, I just watched this, uh, one of the, one of the uh, entries for the Paul Revere contest came out, and this guy just took these clips from all different news agencies, and they're saying the exact same thing about the Easter Bunny. Uh, this is, it's crazy. You would not believe it. And he took the time the and Easter just, Bunny? There's, yeah, about how the Easter Bunny is not going to have a spring in his step. They just, it's worded exactly every news agency and it's all over. He's, he's like 10 of them. It's, it's not like two. It's not yeah. like two of it. It's, it's like 15. Yeah. And then he goes well, to I mean, another. What it does is, is, even if it's fluff. Yeah. 
that's the move to that. It, it, it allows them to totally control and put out one Borg message. Listen, get back exactly. to the great interview. I'm out there in the control room watching this with everybody else out there on PrisonPlanet.tv. All right, all right. <laughs> Wayne, it's always yeah, great right. having you in town. Thank this guy, by the way, is a riot in person. Oh, yeah. No, he's got some great jokes. He's a Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the go. The NSA doesn't think I'm uh, much of a comedy act. But. Right. Well, you know, going back to uh, the newly leaked NSA slide that shows tapping, for, you know, the undersea phone cable, you go into this, they were talking about this stuff even before 9-11, how there was a sub out there, that, and they'd figure out a way to actually go into these fiber optic lines without letting people know about it. But this is all old news. I mean, all Snowden did was just provide a, um, a, a cover term. He, he, he provided some new uh, slides, some new information uh, to show that there, you know, this, this was an ongoing program. Right. It never stopped. It had been modernized. Yeah. Uh, he did give us that. And the, the biggest thing is how NSA is now cooperating with all these uh, Internet service providers, right. uh, the Yahoo's, the Microsoft's, the Skype's, uh, Google, you name it. Mm -hmm. and, and so we knew that, too. But. He showed us the slides. He gave us the dates. He gave us everything. And yeah. on the way in, uh, you were in, in our green room over there, and you turned on your computer, and suddenly you got the vicious Microsoft update. And okay. what happened? Uh, my, my, uh, my hard disk was wiped clean. It went back to factory settings. Yeah. Nothing that I did. This, this, this started. They're not tracking you, Wayne. No, no, no. no. And it, we just have in The Guardian today the latest uh, 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 article uh, yeah. by Greenwald uh, and the others about how NSA and Microsoft are in cahoots uh, right. with Skype uh, g getting into encrypted files, yeah. encrypted communications. We've known that for a long time, too, because uh, Microsoft for some years has had an office across Baltimore Washington Parkway from NSA headquarters in the How convenient. in the business park over there. Yeah, they're on call 24 hours a day. I got yeah. that from internal people. Right. At NSA. And you said that years ago. I did. And I mean, now they admit that all the telecoms are moving them indoors with them. But that's what the four or five years ago, the, um, the whistleblower uh, in San Francisco at AT&T. Uh, yep. Klein, Klein, Mark Klein said that about the closet uh, in, in the, the, the secret room, and then there were others right. all around the country that right. Jim, uh, Jim Banford uh, highlighted later in his book. So we've known a lot of this, you know. Snowden, at least he, because of the cloak and dagger aspect of his story, yeah. you know, flying from oh, right. Hawaii to Hong Kong, right. and, and we didn't know who he was, and then he says, I, I, I'm Ed Snowden, I worked at Booz Allen. Seems he, very scripted. Yeah, 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 but, you know, I mean, maybe it was done that way to get the attention of the mm -hmm. media, because we know what the media goes after. They go after right. these James Bond-type situations. Right. Otherwise, if it's a poor guy like Klein, who was just a, you know, he was an AT&T technician, Oh, yeah. yeah you know, he's the right. guy. You know, yeah, right. No, you you know, got to yeah. add a little yeah. element to right. it. I, yeah. You know, Greenwald, I think, did a good job at, at like, doling out the information, and then, like, now we're going to show you who he is. Exactly. And, and that, that was good. But it was stuff we had been talking about Absolutely. for years. I mean, the, the, and, and yeah. you know, and then the information came out after they said you were totally wrong. You know, Snowden claims Germany in bed with the NSA. Here's one. Uh, new NSA, NSA leak show how U.S. is bugging its European allies. That's the Guardian. Uh, U.S. and E.U. shrug off Edward Snowden's NSA revelations to resume the big trade talk, which they want to do to basically create, you know, the next cadre of the New World Order, the next level of it, just going in to, you know, now we're going to do free trade areas everywhere. And it's just, it's ridiculous that all this stuff comes out. You know, we've been saying it for years. Nobody pays any attention, hmm. you know, when the alternative media does it. It's only when the mainstream media does it, then it's allowed to be talked about all of a sudden. But you're still, you know, you may be a conspiracy theorist if you want to talk about Michael Hastings and his, you know, interesting death. Absolutely. So, I mean, um, this, um, th this is just uh, so typical. CNN, nobody really watches these uh, cable news networks anymore. Look, on the, weekend, on the weekends, they don't even run news unless there's a plane crash. And then they have, the, you know, the B, the B, uh, the B list of uh, anchors on there screwing everything up like they did with the plane, the Asiana plane crash in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I mean, but normally, what do the cable news networks run on the weekends? Oh, lock-up programs, uh, you know, repeat reruns. I mean, it's not even news. Now you get about how drugs are good for you, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah all this garbage, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, they're not doing news. And then they got pundits when there is a late a uh, breaking story, a, br a breaking story. Uh, they'll have pundits on there, like this guy uh, that took over from Ed Schultz uh, on MSNBC. This Chris Hayes guy. He's a he's a pundit. Uh, Rachel Maddow's a pundit, and then they're trying to do 
reporting of news, right. plane okay. crashes. They're not qualified to do this. Right. Yes, Cronkite was qualified to do that. Rather was qualified to do that. But these people don't exist. They've been replaced by these, I don't know what the heck they are. Well, Rachel I Maddow's mean, qualified to get people up into a racial frenzy, especially over this Trayvon Martin thing, which it yeah. came out earlier this week that you know the Justice Department was actually funding uh, some of these protests. They were yeah. actually sending money down to actually fund protests for people to just you know, go out and just exude more yeah. racial Let, hatred. Let's take a local story, a local Florida story. Right. Uh, should be the Orlando market story because, you know, Sanford is in the Orlando happens, market. You know, how many people? Are yeah, there? yeah, you know, right. Especially in Chicago. Let's leave it, you know, let's leave it in Orlando. No, but somebody in New York and somebody in L.A. decide, well, we're going to make this a national story. This is nonsense. These this stories the never one. went national right. before these cable news networks decided we can take these isolated stories and make a big deal out of it right and you know it started with OJ and some of these other cases but these are these are local stories uh, nobody should care around the country about what happens in a in a in a, in a case of a, uh, a, a, a shooting uh, in Sanford Florida I mean you know I mean there's probably people in Orlando that could care less about what happens in Sanford Florida let alone somebody who lives in say Seattle but then or the Boston. president comments on it and suddenly it becomes does. a national issue right exactly you know? yeah Obama will comment by the way uh, Obama he did this with Bradley Manning he said you know he's guilty of uh, you know this terrible espionage mm -hmm. he's not allowed to say that as a chief executive what right. what constitutional law did this man teach and now he trial? said that about Snowden he said right. we you know Snowden you know, he should keep his mouth shut he doesn't know how to keep his mouth shut he opens it when you know it, it, it he's gonna get maximum attention but he's also uh, not giving uh, he didn't give uh, Bradley Manning or Edward Snowden any sort of um, due, uh, process. due process by, uh, it, you know, Nixon got in trouble, Richard Nixon, when he said, um, you know, Charles Manson's guilty. Manson held that paper up in the courtroom, said, Manson guilty, Nixon says. They almost had a mistrial who the guy, you know, the right. guy that was charged with the Sharon Tate, you know, and other murders. Well, what other kind of dirty tricks do these guys do to just, you know, and especially in the false flag realm, what, what do you see coming up down the pike? Well, I mean, <laughs> False flags, they say that's a conspiracy theory. You know, they, these don't exist. I mean, they, of course these exist. These have existed through history. The latest one, and I merely speculate it because of all the interest in the XL Keystone pipeline, you know, and there's a lot, of, a lot of money in Canada that wants to push for that. The Prime Minister Stephen Harper is pushing for it. He's from Alberta, where the tar sands are located. And, and then, uh, you know, this train uh, uh, breaks loose and, and it wipes out 60-some people, people are vaporized are they can't find them. in Le Magentic uh, near the, in Quebec, near the main border. And, you know, I said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, uh, Blackwater was hired by Halliburton, you know, one of the pipeline companies to, to do that. To, mm -hmm. Because w right afterwards we heard... We heard people who push are pushing the pipeline say, "Yeah, you see, this is a pipeline. You wouldn't have this because the trains wouldn't be coming through uh, your towns with the you know the, 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 this deadly uh, cargo right. of fuel oil uh, that could cause this." So that's why we need the pipeline. I said, "Isn't that convenient that they're coming out and saying that now?" And that now the art, we know that the Canadian police have that under investigation as yeah. a potential industrial sabotage criminal the act. They said somebody Absolutely. messed with the brakes. Absolutely. So now they're so, looking at it like So that. here we go. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, a conspiracy theory? Uh, uh, well, uh, then then the RCMP must be into conspiracy. What about Michael Hastings' death? I Michael mean, the Hastings, engine goes right. in a different direction, car rolls into a tree. Right. right. You know, I mean, uh, the, the, the engine block is found, what, 50 yards from the, 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 the autumn? You they know, won't release the police report? They never do the in these cases. The I've covered a lot of uh, cases like this in Washington where the, you either don't get the police report or you got to, you know, uh, you got to know somebody on the inside that'll leak it to you. I mean, uh, Marvin Bush, who was George W. Bush's brother, his, you know, his maid, Bertha Champagne, was run over by her own SUV at Marvin Bush's home in Alexandria, Virginia, and they withheld that police report. Yeah. I managed to get it and and they had old Marvin listed as uh, witness suspect uh, or other you know I mean he was he was the only one present at the home in the home at the time when 
this woman's car somehow went into reverse gear and ran over her. Right. And there was a videotape mentioned that she had a videotape. And who knows what she was? What was that videotape? That was in the police report. No wonder they didn't want that uh, that uh, that release. Somebody so. would ask a question and they had to find it. Right. Yeah, there we go. Police uh, firefighters ordered not to speak about My Michael Hastings crash. And it's just cover up after cover up. But now we're catching them every time they do something. We're able to just come back and say, oh, we caught you. We caught you on that one. Yeah. Just like when these Daily Beast uh, reporters came after you, you're, we're like two days later, everything comes out that you said. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, as I said, the, the, there, there were only probably about six people involved in this, this uh, uh, screed against the Daily Observer. Now, it's interesting, the big German newspaper, Die Welt, also had it up on the front page, and then they broke that link. They put it back up in its original form, a uh, picture of Angela Merkel, mm -hmm. with my quote underneath in German saying, she's like the chief inspector in Casablanca that walks into Rick's Cafe and says, I'm shocked, shocked to find gambling in this establishment because she said she didn't know that this espionage this surveillance was going on she's oh, really? part of it she's yeah, of course exactly. she's part of it so they put it back up and now they say she's in uh, political trouble now yeah. uh, in Germany but uh, uh, well, that's how they always do it until it comes yeah. out they just lie 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 and then you go well here's the documents Absolutely. well conspiracy theorist you're looking at the documents Absolutely. I got another one for you how about uh, the younger Zarnef brother comes into court yeah. he looks like he's been beaten more he's in cast in his hands now and he says I'm not guilty yeah, and it also comes out that his brother, who, you know, there's a lot of uh, video evidence that showed that his brother was not run over by a car, that they, it looked like a, the guy was naked. Yeah. You know, they stripped him because right. they were... And walked him into a walked car. Walked Yeah. His aunt and, said that and, was him. And now, now it's come out from Boston law enforcement that he was a known drug dealer. Drug dealer, jihadist, al-Qaeda. Yeah. Wait a minute. Something sounds doesn't... Sounds like he's got inside connections. Yeah, sounds like something he's doesn't... The and government. then Uncle Ruslan, yeah. of course, is tied up with Graham Fuller. Right. Uh, a longtime CIA agent, Uncle Ruslan is forgotten about. I, I immediately smelled a rat with that when they had the helicopters in Washington flying over Uncle Ruslan's house in Montgomery County. I said, "Hey, Uncle Ruslan's got some money." Yeah. I mean, you know, you know. I mean, this guy's this guy's not a poor He's guy. Some side deals. And you look at, you look into his background. He was heading up all these CIA connected. Uh, non-profit organization, basically CIA giving weapons to the Chechens fighting the Russian government. Right, and yeah. it's easy to skim a little off the top there. and, and Yeah, and buy a nice big $350,000 home in suburban Washington, D.C. Right, and now earlier also you were talking about where Edward Snowden may have worked, and there's this uh, hub that people don't talk about. It's an NSA-CIA kind of collusion center. Talk yeah, about that. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I uh, speculated, uh, you know, it's informed speculation, but when they talked about him being uh, assigned to the U.S. mission to the U.N. organizations in Geneva, Switzerland, and that he got this information about some Swiss guy was set up a banker by the CIA and a DWI and they, you know, got information. You know, I said, wait, wait a minute. The only place if he, he what the Swiss foreign ministry said, yes, he was assigned to the U.S. embassy. So that that was true. Mm -hmm. I said it had he had to have been with this um, group called the Special Collection Service. It's 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 a it's a hybrid organization. It's CIA and NSA, and they go in and put bugs in embassies. And we again knew about this from a book written by uh, Mike Frost, who worked for the Canadian NSA, the Communication Security Establishment Canada, wrote a book called Spy World back in the mid '90s, where he explained all this about yeah. how when the U, uh, when NSA couldn't bug somebody in the United States, they'd call the Canadians down to do it for them, right, to right. get around the FISA. Mm -hmm. Margaret Thatcher got the Canadians to come over and, and, and do the same thing on her own cabinet ministers. So we knew about these. We knew the code words, oratory, all these code, code names came out in his book. But I figured Snowden's bringing this back up to date about this organization. It's, for, it's not even well known in NSA. It's called F6 in NSA. Not everybody in NSA has clearance or access for that project. But this is what it does. So, and, and later, what does Snowden do? He comes out and says, yes, special collection services are in 65 U.S. embassies and missions around the world doing foreign satellite interception. And of course, the Latin Americans were mentioned in particular. They're up in arms about this now. But, right. you know, it's New Delhi and other capitals. Well, we've got to keep an eye on our petty dictators that we have planned. Exactly. But, you know, it came out we're also spying on, again, spying on our so-called allies. Right. But uh, we've been doing that uh, for years. 
and uh, the leaders of those countries know what's going on because they are. They, we give them some of this intelligence so they can use it against their political adversaries. This is why Angela Merkel's in trouble. But look, the Social Democrats, they get in there, they're going to do the same thing. We're going to give them the intelligence to, uh, on the Christian, you know, it's the elites. Now, General Keith Alexander, mm -hmm. this is not well known. He didn't go to the Bilderberg meeting outside of London this year, but the last five he was present at, the, at Bilderberg. What is the head of the NSA and the U.S. Cyber Command? now he wears two hats what's he right. doing at bilderberg run an intercept operation they're, they're going after snowden for releasing slides that say no foreign which mm -hmm. means not uh no uh foreign dissemination we've got a, the, the head of nsa over there talking to the leading industrialists mm -hmm. in europe and all their secret service agents and their heads of security exactly. and it, it's uh, just a big off collision. the record all this off the record stuff and this year alexander didn't go but the ceo of this company palantir went there right. one of the companies involved with the sock puppet operations right the com a company that was involved with hb gary federal and going after glenn greenwald when he was writing about the bank of america you know so we can see what what's going on here Greenwald is being attacked by the same people that attacked me on that CNN Reliable Sources program. Right. The same people that attacked poor Helen Thomas when she was caught by a, a guy with a hidden camera inside the White House grounds. How do you get a how do you get a hidden camera inside the White House grounds? You got to go through Secret Service. So, you know, yeah, people, journalists like Dan Rather, Helen Thomas, Glenn Greenwald. And, you know, and I, I'm not on the same level. I won't say that I am, but I got set up by these clowns with reliable sources. Right. Um, but, you know, let them do what they want, because I went back to 2000 and right there in the CNN archives is is uh, is I'm quoted talking about NSA eavesdropping on email. Yeah. It's in 2000. In 2000. Right, right. And that, that came out in this Washington's blog article, too. They list a bunch of old sources from 2004. Uh, the mid 1990s. They're talking about the special submarines, and then there's a, even a quote uh, from General uh, Lieutenant General Hayden, who's the NSA chief at the time. Computing power will allow it to process greater masses of data, which he says hopes will eventually allow a single analyst to extract wisdom from vast varieties of raw information. That's where we're at now. The we're Utah Data at that. Center, right, NSA's exactly. big 17, uh, the size of 17 football fields can process a yada byte of data. That's so many zeros, yeah. you, it's, you can't even figure it out. It's a lot of G-rates. Exactly, so you know, this is where Hayden always wanted to go with this. Right. Um, and, and, and this is, NSA, even when I was at NSA in the, in, the, in the 80s, they used a term that shocked me. They said they want a total hearability for everything in the world. Remember, this is when they were intercepting radio, phone calls. Mm -hmm. This is before the World Wide Web. We did have the internet, but the hearability, they thought in terms of listening. Uh, rather what do you than, think the little cell phones are that you're carrying ex around? Exactly. He, they want a total hearability. That's what their goal was in the 1980s. And I said, they want to hear everything. And they said, yeah, they do. In that's 2009, the, that's the we were reporting about a program called Roving Bug, where the uh, feds were actually turning on mics of gangsters so they could listen in on the phone, even if it was powered off. Oh, that, absolutely. That two, and it was happening before that. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, and, and, the, and the GPS is in, in cell phones today. Right. Somebody in NSA told me, look, even if you take the battery out, a lot of people take the batteries out of their phones, there's still enough juice in, in powering that, that chip, that yeah. GPS, that chip, that locator chip that three passes by a satellite, they can still pick, your, pick up your uh, location. Oh, they can geolocate you. Totally ridiculous. Where are we going from here? I, when will the scandal get big enough to either bring down this NSA apparatus that's going on or even, you know, bring down the Obama administration? Well, I mean, the problem is, um, uh, you know, uh, Edward Snowden is the focus. People are more focused on him than they are on the information yeah, he's released. And I, I don't think he obviously wants to be the center of attention. I mean, every time a plane leaves Moscow, Sherman Tavio Airport now, they think he's on it if it's heading down towards Latin America. Right. So. Where in the world is Edward Snowden? I know. So this is the this is the problem uh, with, with the focus on him. But I have to say, Nixon did make his his uh, disagreement with uh, Daniel Ellsberg, who released the Pentagon Papers. Mm -hmm. uh, he made it somewhat personal, and you know, having his plumbers team burglarize Dan Ellsberg's psychiatrist's office. But 
you know, Nixon dealt with the, you know, the Gordon Liddies. And so there was like something in between. Nixon wanted to get all the leakers. Right. Yeah, Ellsberg, one of them. But Obama has really personalized this with Snowden, like he did with Bradley Manning. And Obama's coming off looking like a South, South Side Chicago thug going after this kind of geeky kid from the Baltimore suburbs. Mm -hmm. And I think people are now recognizing Snowden is the underdog here, and he's got support all over the world from, from Latin America, mm -hmm. from Africa, from the Middle East, from Europe, from Eastern Europe, from Asia. Uh, and Obama's, uh, you know, he was popular in some of these countries. His popularity has, it, it has sank. Well, it sucks. So, People realize the fraud. Right. And That's why it's not going to be hard to make the Obama deception, too. Yeah. All the information's out there. He stuck his foot in his mouth. He's killing people with drones, left and right children. You know, he, he's, he's going into Africa. I mean, we have, we yeah. have troops in probably 20, at least 20 different uh, countries and areas in Africa. Right, I mean, right. it's ridiculous. Right, and, and he's threatening countries with sanctions if they right. help Snowden. Uh, um, he's, he's got, you know, the forcing down of the Bolivian president's airplane in Austria. One country after another closed its airspace because the U.S. put pressure on them. I mean, this is a vi total violation of international law. And, uh, you know, uh, and, and threatening countries like Iceland that was considering giving him asylum. And, and, and now Ireland has said, uh, we're not going to execute that Interpol arrest warrant. The High Court of Ireland said that. Uh, you know, all he does is respond like personally, him and Kerry. Uh, uh, Kerry, of course, all, all during this whole thing with the Egyptian yeah, coup yeah. and Snowden, he's out sailing, you know, just yeah. like he was in 2004. A guy who worked for John Kerry in that campaign said if John Kerry was more interested in becoming president than he was about his hair quaff, he might have actually made it in the White House. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is what we have. This Again, this is the elites, the oligarchs. We talk about them all, all right. the time. Um, well, what do you think is next? What what do you think we're going to have else come out of Edward Snowden's mouth, or what what is he going to leak that is is going to surprise people? Uh, will they just you know what what, what do you think is going to be the big shooter drop? He he's, he's got a lot of PowerPoint slides, and I, I I don't know whether they've actually you know given us every you know all the good stuff has come out. Yeah. Uh, that may be the case. It, I, I noticed like the the last uh, revelation was about. Um, uh, NSA being able to um, um, intercept video Skype and encrypted uh, communications using uh, Skype and Microsoft products. We're getting into the more technical stuff now, mm -hmm. stuff we've already also known about. We've right. known them. Yeah, we know but, Skype has been yeah, on, the, on the list. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the important stuff, the metadata and all this capturing email, I think we're probably now into the more mundane NSA programs. I think they probably, we've heard the biggest revelations already. Okay. He probably has other stuff, but uh, just looking at, I think we peaked in the uh, revelations, and now we're getting down to the technical stuff. Okay. Well, what's going <coughs> on your plate? What are you investigating right now? Well, I, uh, you know, I had to deal with this attack um, by these um, these uh, neocons, uh, and, and, uh, but the, you know the mere fact that they came out of the uh, closet and identified themselves. One of them is a guy named Professor John Schindler at the U.S. Naval War College. Uh, he was tweet. He was sending Twitter message after Twitter message out, uh, attacking the Observer, the Guardian, Greenwald. He's a U.S. government employee. Right. He's tied in with people we know are part of this Karl Rove operation. Uh, he's tied up with people that are known uh, neocons. Uh, what is, uh, there's something called the Hatch Act. You cannot use your title. He says, yeah, I'm a professor at the U.S. Naval War College. That's his official government title. Mm -hmm. I have contacted the War College. I've complained about this. I haven't heard nothing back. I go back and look at, I got a certificate in international relations from the War College when I was in the Navy in 1983. It was, a, you know, you didn't hear much about the Naval War College, Newport, Rhode Island, you know. But going back, it, it turns out when I'm focusing on the War College, it is a neocon bevy up there in Rhode Island. They, they had Lori Milroy as one of their um, uh, associate professors. She's the one who said that Saddam Hussein was behind the 1993 World Trade Center.
bombing. Even Peter Bergen with CNN said she was a crackpot with that theory. Right, you know? because we know it was the FBI. And, and, and so we <laughs> got this guy, Barnett. He's another guy. He's the one who came out with this, this map that the U.S. will control the world in the 21st century, you know. Mm, okay. uh, all this yeah. all this neocon drivel and claptrap. You need a new Pearl Harbor. Coming out of the yeah. Naval War College. So I'm glad the Naval War College has exposed themselves by not uh, cracking down on the political activism and the violation of the Hatch Act uh, at, at a Navy college, part of the United States Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, are we going to see anybody from, you know, Chuck Hagel, uh, you know, is he going to do anything? I doubt it because he made his deal with the devil when he, you know, was confirmed by the Senate, close vote, but he, he got in there. So, you know, these people aren't going to uh, enforce the law. Why should they enforce the Hatch Act when they're not even enforcing the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act? Right, or even the Logan Act, where the Logan the, the Act. officials aren't supposed to get together from other countries in secret meetings. Like we General have Alexander going right. to five Bilderberg meetings. Every right, year, right. Exactly. you know, it happens in right. Bilderberg, yeah. and, you know, we're finally starting to, to really blow that out. I mean, this last Bilderberg was amazing, you know, over, you know, Almost 4,000 people went there to protest. I mean, that's big. <laughs> that is big. That's that's big. big. We're, we're getting the regular you media think most people, to report on uh, it. You know, there were only a handful of people that yeah. could go in there and try to find out what was going on. Right. Hey, let's end with a couple spy stories. Um, you, you were telling us some stories about Hayden, how you, you've kind of been his nemesis for years, and, and uh, he sees you at events and whatnot. Yeah, well, back when back when uh, there were whistleblowers. And by the way, one of the things I hear about uh, from every journalist in Washington, from the New York Times and and mainstream media, everybody's afraid to talk. You know, Obama ordering spying on the Associated Press, a hundred over a hundred right. reporters and journalists, the guy Rosen from Fox News, everyone's afraid to talk. No uh, sources have dried up, they've chilled. It's a yeah. it's it's really cold in Washington when it comes to sources now. And um, but I back when I had a lot of sources at NSA coming forward, especially after 9-11. Uh, Hayden was a director, and I heard through the grapevine that Hayden wanted to be briefed on my activities once a week for his daily briefing in the morning. And his Little deputy, and his deputy Bill Black, had to get a daily briefing. So uh, Hayden had a weekly briefing. Bill Black had a had a daily briefing on what I was doing. Obviously, my phones were tapped. Right. I was told I was in this database called First Fruits, which spied on some journal. Every journalist who covered NSA extensively. And uh, so I saw General Hayden at a White House Correspondents' Dinner. Some people were talking, and then all of a sudden he turned around, who's standing next to me but General Hayden? And I said, you know, small talk, he says, he had retired. I says, well, how's retirement life treating you, General? He said, oh, pretty good, pretty good. And, uh, you know, and uh, I said, well, I, I guess I kept you, uh, I caused you a couple sleepless nights. He says, oh, well, you know, it's all part of this old Washington thing, you know, like it's all a big, it's a big game, game here. It's a yeah. big game, yeah. Well, you know, being spied on to me isn't a, isn't a game. Right. And and uh, the next time I saw him, he had left, of course, he had, he had left uh, uh, NSA, and then he, he was over there at the um, um, CIA as director, and there was a big, uh, I, I went to an Association for Intelligence Officers thing, and here is Hayden in the auditorium at NSA, and I'm standing there because I'm attending this thing, and he spots me, and his head turned red. <laughs> and he, he walked by, he was with some other guy, and he says, be careful, we're on treacherous ground right now. Treacherous yeah, ground. Treacherous ground. So, yeah, I've been some kind of a pain, uh, pain to Hayden over the years. But, you know, people were coming forward at NSA and telling me how, how he was involved in all these um, projects that were billions of dollars being wasted, Groundbreaker, Trailblazer. And these were all the projects that led to what Snowden is revealing today. And they're today. still wasting money to this day. Total waste of money. You know, they're saying, uh, I think just to to get to that undersea cable and tap it $2 billion a year. Yeah. I mean, ridiculous. Yeah. So, you know, you see, you see SAIC and Booz Allen and, and these other companies just making uh, lots and lots of money. Uh, our money. That our taxpayers' yeah. money. Yeah. It's, it's incredible. Wow. Well, you can, uh, uh, t your website, uh, the Matson Report. Wayne Matson Wayne Report. Report. Com. Com. Yeah. yeah, that's where people can find out. They, it's a subscription service where they can get on, get this intel. Um, you, you were writing stuff about the underwear bomber when that came out, too. I remember yeah. when that, that was one of the first uh, big false flags when I started at InfoWars. I was working on a movie and that came out. And I'm like, we got to start pulling this he information. He was allowed on that plane, yeah. that Northwest plane, with a, the same kind of refugee document that 
Ed Snowden got from the Ecuadorian consul in London that allowed him to travel to Moscow after the U.S. revoked his passport. This Matalab guy right. from Nigeria was allowed on the plane to Detroit with a refugee die. He did not have a passport. And How does that and, happen? And with a bunk bomb that couldn't have worked no matter what. All oh, right, of you know? course. Yeah. yeah, that's how they do it. Well, Wayne, thanks for stopping by, and you're okay. going to be on tomorrow on the yes. Alex Jones Show, yes. and then we're going to sit down and do a really, uh, really in-depth interview with you for the Obama deception and really get the goods out. Obama deception two, which uh, will be coming out in I think early November, and uh, so that's going to be. I'm looking forward to having you on that, being part of the of the crew. We got a lot of great interviews, and you're you're really going to top it off and really bring it together because, you know, you're the original Edward Snowden. Giving us the goods, at least, and you know, in our eyes. And, well, at least I'm not on. The, I'm not eating pizza in Sharon Tavio Airport in Moscow. There you go. <laughs> it, is, it is better to be in, in Austin, Texas, at this time. And uh, you know, our show is not done. Actually, we're going to go to break, and we'll be back with uh, Gigi Ernetta. She's going to be interviewing a fellow who implanted um, magnets into his ears so he can listen to music without putting headphones in. I guess it's all part of this new transhumanist thing where people, you know, want to do different things to their bodies to augment their abilities. And uh, he's got some interesting applications that he's going to talk about. But Gigi found that story. I said, get this guy on. Let's, let's uh, talk with him about this because this is all information that, you know, we should be getting out there, especially when it's on not the government level. This is like an individual who decided to do this on his own. He wasn't coerced to do it. So it'll be interesting to see what he has to say about this whole process of body modification and why he did it. And we'll be able to get those answers right after this break. And uh, one way to fund us, uh, one way to help us out, get people like Wayne Matson here, is through your PrisonPlanet.tv subscriptions. Uh, it's $5.95 a month. You get a 15-day free trial, and you have access to the Daily Show live, the Nightly News live, all the special reports, all the movies, the rants, the e-books. Everything is there for you, and you can share your username and password with up to 10 other people. So you can have 11 people using your username and password on at the same time all watching. And, uh, you know, if we get enough people doing that, hopefully we'll start crashing our servers, and then we'll have to get bigger servers and get more because more people are tuning in to Prison Planet TV. It's great work in here. I'm having a blast doing this, like really exposing what is going on out there that the mainstream media won't do because they're funded by giant pharmaceutical companies and toxic chemical makers. And, you know, basically the worst of the worst that's out there, we're funded by the people and by the products we sell that we think are good and that you need, especially like water filters. So with that, we'll be back after this brief message. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas, starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught 
going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original, real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.